Hey, this quick video is on a topic that I've already talked about a few times, but the reason why I'm doing this video is because I received a comment, I think it was on Facebook, I haven't been able to relocate it, but where somebody criticized me, rightfully so, because they said that I missed out on the best way to remember the relationship between superheat, subcooling, dew point, and bubble point. But before I give you the secret, I want to first remind you what dew point, bubble point are. So first off, if you don't already have the Refrigerant Slider app, by Dan Foss, I would suggest that you download that so that you can follow along with exactly what I'm doing. But I'm gonna use R22 and R407C as ways of demonstrating this. So if you take a look at R22 on the Refrigerant Slider app, and you plug in 68.54 PSI or 40 degree saturation, you'll see that the two correlate. So 68.54 PSI correlates to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the Refrigerant Slider app, you can see up top next to choose refrigerant, there is no option for switching between dew and bubble. So that can't be changed. The reason is, is because R22 is a single component refrigerant, and so it does not have any glide. So it is what is known as an azeotropic refrigerant. Um, it has no glide. Now, really an azeotrope would be a blend that has no glide. R22 is a single component, so it has no glide. So don't get the terms confused there, but it, it, it's glideless. It's got no glide, right? You look at something like R410A. R410A, if you take a look here, it only has 0.1 degrees of glide at 40 degree, at 40 degree evaporative coil between dew and bubble point. But let's talk about what dew and bubble point are. So imagine that you're looking out on the horizon and you have the ocean down below and you have the sky up above, that line, that thin line would be what we would call the saturation line. And that's the line at which if the refrigerant is boiling or condensing, changing state from vapor to liquid, it will be at that temperature so long as the pressure is the same. Now, unlike a horizon that's always at atmospheric pressure, generally about 14.7 PSIA is atmospheric pressure, within an air conditioning system, that pressure changes. And so again, this metaphor isn't perfect, but it just gives you a way to envision that line. When we say saturation, that is the line where refrigerant is changing state and that temperature remains the same. So it's a thin, thin line, just like a horizon line. Now, if you have a zeotropic refrigerant, zeotropic means that it has glide. That would be something like R407C that we're going to use here in the example. Now there's this range and that's represented by the fog. So now instead of there being just a line of the horizon, now the horizon is represented by a fog in between the ocean and the sky. And so it's not when it's in the fog, it's all in saturation. It's all changing state but it changes state from a range. It starts off at bubble point, which is a lower temperature, and then it slowly works its way up to dew point. And so when you have refrigerant going into an evaporator coil, it starts off at bubble point. In this case, you can see that it is a lower temperature than the dew point. So in the case of R407C, which is the example that we're using here, you can see that it starts off at bubble point at 28.9 degrees. If you're using 63.8 PSI, that's pretty low, but we're just going to use this as an example because then when you, by the time you get to dew, which is 40 degrees, but by the time you get to the end of the evaporator coil, which is dew point at that point, when it's fully boiling off, when it's just that last little bit of vapor, now it's at 40 degrees. So if you want a 40 degree outlet on your evaporator coil, then you would have to have a 28.9 degree inlet on your evaporator coil. That's that range. That's that range of saturation when you have glide on a blend refrigerant, which is what we call a zeotropic refrigerant. Um, 410A, with only that little tiny amount, we call that a near azeotrope. So that means that it's near, it has nearly no glide at all. And so we're used to working in air conditioning with R22 and then with 410A. So we haven't used a lot of glide. Now, when you go into a lot of these blends or a lot of the modern refrigerants, you're starting to find more glide. So you have to learn how to deal with that. So you have the temperature that it starts boiling at, and then you have the temperature that it ends boiling at. But here's how you can remember which is used for subcooling, which is used for superheat. Very easy. So it's bub cool. Bubble point is used for subcool. So all you have to do is remember bub cool. Dew point is used for superheat. So all you have to remember is duper heat, D-E-W per heat. So it's like superheat, but duper heat. You get the point, all right? Now that's the, those were the words that were given to me in the comments. It really is a great way to remember it. And so if you're ever working with a refrigerant blend and you're having to measure superheat, you use dew point to measure subcool, you use bubble point, and it's easy to remember because it's bub cool and duper heat. And just remember that that glide is like having a wider horizon. It's that boiling or condensing temperature is now a band, unlike a single component refrigerant or an azeotrope where that is just a single line, a single point at which that condensing temperature or boiling temperature occurs at that pressure. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember bub cool and duper heat. Thanks for watching.